Oh. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Tony with HVAC Explained. I'm taking a service call, first one from our company, to take a service call at this restaurant. The complaint was not warm enough in the space. The unit right behind me here, immediately I can tell, has not been maintained. I'll show you why here in a minute. This unit is called a makeup air unit, okay? It does what it says, it makes up air. The reason why they use them at restaurants is because they have exhaust fans. Exhaust fans to take away combustible gases from their burners, from their stoves, from burning food, from boiling water. Gets rid of all that bad smell. Now the only problem is it'll turn the place into a gigantic negative pressure. So you're going to suck in air. As soon as people come in that front door where they're sitting trying to relax and get have a nice meal, they're getting whatever temperature it is outside, whether it's 90 degrees or zero degrees, that air is pouring through there. Okay, well, to eliminate that, make up air. Okay, make up air. Now, this one has a gas fired, it's natural gas. Okay, this is from Captive Air. There's many different brands out there. Captive, good brand. So, we have 100% outdoor air go straight in. They're going to utilize filter screens. They're kind of like economizer filter screens. These things are supposed to basically look like this, only you could pretty much see through them. What do you guys think? Let me actually hold this right up to that blazing sun right there. Yeah, you see any airflow? Anything, anything? Bueller, Bueller. So, now we got a lot more airflow. It's probably gonna run a lot better. Well, I wanna go inside, I wanna take a look, see if we got belts in there. Um, wash all these filters with just scalding hot water, use a garden hose if possible. That's what I wanna do. You don't wanna use condenser coil cleaner on here because this is aluminum and it will rot these out big time. So, all right, well, I have not met up with my customer yet. He was on his way here, so I'm gonna go see if I can find him. I just decided to come up on the roof and just take a look around. I hate wasting people's time and money. So, okay guys, be right back. Okay guys, these are exhaust fans. There's two exhaust fans here. This one's got grease all throughout it. Most likely that, that one's above the main cook serving line area. This one's probably somewhere either out in the kitchen. I don't think it's for the restroom, but again, I've never been inside of here. So it's exhausting. It's creating that negative pressure. You need the makeup air unit to make up that air to make it positive or neutral again. I would like to see positive instead of just being in a negative. So now I still got to meet up with my customer. He hasn't uh, come back yet. So, but um, let me run you over here with these. I don't want to shut down anything because they are currently cooking. It's lunchtime as, as we speak. So you can see all the grease building up here. Now, when grease builds up like this, believe it or not, it can be a fire hazard. So always notify your customer to annually, uh, well, occasionally get them clean. They steam pressure wash them and whatnot. So here's the regular exhaust fan, probably belt driven. Let me take a little look here. Oh, good. Direct drive. Direct drive motor does not have a belt. Less things to go wrong, in my opinion. I don't like where that paper is at right there. There we go. So, um, leaving manuals inside of equipment is somewhat nice, but somewhat cannot be nice because things get deteriorated over time. So, but yeah different types of exhaust fans from this company. Um, one main company we deal with, uh, yeah, there's Captive Air, but also uh, Green Heck. Green Heck's also a competitor, so. Always be cautious for bees as well. Bees love to go around cooking equipment. I don't want to pull that off at this time, so. 
I got to get different gloves so I don't ruin these ones. I don't want to shut this down yet till I meet up with my customer. And then we got a rooftop unit here. Looks like a packaged unit. You know what? Haven't even pulled this door off yet. Let me pull it off. Doesn't even sound like it's running. It's running. Definitely running. Definitely could use new filters. The filters are not plugged solid. Uh, they don't look as clean as I want them to be. Um, typically you do shut down equipment, by the way, before you pull all these out in case you stir up more dust. But as you can see, that evap coil needs a good cleaning. So. Surprisingly, we have a nice day here in Pittsburgh, and it's middle of December, so there's that global warming for you. So, okay guys, I gotta try to meet up with this customer here, so, and we'll go from there. Okay guys, I got to meet up with my customer. Um, they would not come up on the roof, they just, I don't know, some people don't wanna come climb ladders. So anyways, uh, as you could tell, these filters are filthy. I showed them the one filter, I went inside the space. The thermostat is set for 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It is 58 degrees Fahrenheit. 58. For the customers to sit in the cold to eat. Um, it's set for 72. So you got your customers. You got staff and workers. Chilly. Okay. And uh, the weather a few days ago here in Pittsburgh was down in the 20 degree range. Okay. Today it's, I don't know, 55, 58 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. This is, this is phenomenal, middle of December. So I'll take it. I'll take this all winter, no problem. Love the sun. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean all these filters, then check out, see if there's belts inside. The, the uh, packaged unit, I have to clean uh, the coils, change the filters on that. Uh, see, is it locked out on a fault code? I don't know at this time, but for now, I'm gonna pull all these filters and get this party started. So here we go. You know what, what am I thinking? I'm gonna start with this rooftop unit because it's 58 degrees Fahrenheit out in the space, okay? So at the least I can do is try to get these customers a little bit warmed up. So this, um, this is a temp master unit. I see that um, it's natural gas. The draft motor's not running. We're probably in on an alarm. Uh, let's see if it's calling for heat. Apple, apple. Oof. All right. Gently set down your panels because this is, uh, you got to be cautious of roofs. Fault codes. Okay, fault codes. It's not saying any faults at this time. Sometimes on newer equipment, they'll have LED lighting that tells you what's going on. Let's see if it comes up on my camera. Steady heartbeat, okay, steady heartbeat. Heartbeat, normal operation, but I'm not buying that, okay? I'm not buying that at this time. Uh, here's our draft inducer motor, our gas valve. Um, I'm gonna shut this unit down because right now it's saying a steady heartbeat. I'm gonna shut it down. I wanna see if there's any belts in here. Um, if it's direct drive or not, I don't know at this time. Um, also, is it calling for heat? We could have just a connection problem. It could be something simple. So let me shut this down and pop some doors. Apparently that's a handle. Never worked on this brand. Oh, okay. Okay, right now belt looks possibly a little bit loose. Let me go ahead and shut her down. We know it's going in the right direction. 
you don't want to leave a door off too long because since there's no static like back pressure it's going to typically draw a high amp draw okay bearings are good as of now belt just needs some adjustment okay i see that first i want to check out a few more things too um i want to see if this thing's calling for heat so Some people like to lock out and tag out, but if I'm standing right there at the disconnect and there literally is nobody around and I'm the only one working in that general vicinity, I don't lock it out. But if I'm going to leave to do something and leave things open, then it's a good practice to go ahead and lock her out. I see our thermostat wires. I'm gonna turn, put this panel, I'm gonna tighten up this belt here and I'm gonna check to see if it's gonna call for heat. I need to do a re review of tools, what tools you will need in the heating and air field because there's many different types and some of them really help you out. These speed wrenches, okay, perfectly fine, good tools. I, this is a Husky, you can get them at Home Depot. They break, take them right back to Home Depot. I don't, I don't own any snap-on, way too expensive. Plus, if you lose them or have them get stolen, then what? These things, what, seven bucks, eight bucks, great. So we got our belt a little bit more tightened, okay? Now, so I always like to mark stuff, okay, when I shift anything, just so I know, because looking at a piece of metal against another metal, it uh, throws you off sometimes. So you just loosen your, your four bolts on the mounting plate, and then you're gonna adjust your all thread and it's gonna push it down. If you go downward, that's gonna tighten it up because it's pulling it away. If you go up, it's gonna shorten that belt life, uh, length because it's leveling off. I wanna take a look at some of this wire and why that's loose there too, so. Okay, and I'm gonna throw that panel on. Okay guys, we got our filters out. Okay, shut her down, take the filters out. Belt's all snug, belt looks good, it's not all cracked up. Um, let me just show you that evap coil real quick here. So it does need cleaned and I will clean it. I would just like to get these guys up and run and give them some heat downstairs for, for God's sake. Okay, but um, I, I was gonna go ahead and check this out first, but, and I was just checking the uh, wiring connections and whatnot, and believe it or not, and I'm not joking, the heat, the heat wire just, it popped right out of its little terminal block. So I'm gonna pop that back in and recycle power Hopefully that's all that it is. I wanna check out other wiring as well because I don't know who installed this. Is anything else loose? So let me go ahead and just double check all the wiring here and just make sure we're all plugged in. Okay, something simple, that's all it could be. Okay guys, so I have that belt all back on and it's nice and snug, that's all good. Now I was checking over the wiring and I pulled off the terminals and actually the heat one, believe it or not, just popped out. It was not screwed in properly. So, but you could actually pull those tabs. I'll show you here just for an example. You can actually pull these right off the circuit board. It's a pretty neat little system. And then you use your thermostat screwdriver to put them back on. So that's, that's pretty neat, I like that. Sometimes new is good. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but right here, and I, no, I did not stage this, I'm dead serious. This one wasn't even clipped in properly. That is labeled P5, so and I did look it up already on the schematic. That is, set this down gently without damaging my customized roof. Uh, we are P5, which looks like VFD, um, looks like for the drive, but our blower was running. So if that's what that goes to, I didn't follow it out any further. Now, um, I did notice they're using aluminum wire. Okay, aluminum wire, I am honestly, I don't get that too much. Not, not up here in North. I've seen it down South at a family members um, down in Florida. Now, since it's aluminum, it, well, heat cool, heat cool, and expansion and contraction. You wanna check those screws regularly, okay? Because they will change, and I did get a little bit of a turn, not putting too much force on them, by the way, a little bit of a turn just on the aluminum screws. 
okay, are on those screws. So there was no faults. We know this right now, okay? We know, grab my gloves. Sheet metal is sharp, people. A lot of people wonder why I wear gloves, but sheet metal is sharp, okay? Another thing, heating and air, I'll put these on. The heating and air field, we have one of the higher cancer rates out of many other fields. Is it from breathing in refrigerant? I don't know. Is it from oil? I don't know. Grease? I don't know. But protect your skin a little bit, if you can. Protect your skin. Blue Dawn dishwashing soap, in my opinion, works better than any lava soap or cherry bomb or any other type of cleaners out there. Blue Dawn dishwashing soap, okay? I keep a bottle in my van. So I have it next to every, my utility tubs, my, uh, even in my shower, sometimes I need it. Before we go to try to fire this up, I wanna clean that flame sensor. Flame sensor's located. Uh, let's see, is this igniter? That's the igniter, where's our flame sensor? Flame sensor for FS, FS, flame sensor. Goes here, I gotta use, it looks like a Phillips head screwdriver, pop that out and wipe that down. So here we go. All right, all right, all right. Now, I just picked this up not too long ago from Supco. I'm actually kind of pleased with it. Used it a couple times. There's a little orifice in there and it's like a little wire brush. And you're, you'll go ahead and push that in and out a few times to clean up that flame sensor, okay? Now, some people don't believe in cleaning flame sensors because there's supposedly a coating and whatnot on there. Well, if I see it dirty, I'm gonna clean it. Sometimes I'll use Brillo pad um, substance. Sometimes I'll use a little bit of emery cloth. You probably should replace the flame sensor instead, but in a bind, attempt to clean it. Looking brand new right there. All right, so our flame sensor's back in. I put our panel back on, we're good there. Wiring connections seem relatively good. Uh, who knows, since there was no alarm, that tells me either we weren't getting a call for heat, because thermostat probably wasn't hooked up, because the wire came loose. Could be a faulty thermostat at, at, at this time. There could be a couple different variables, but here we go. Time delay. Typically there's roughly a five minute time delay, sometimes set up by the manufacturer in the circuit boards, sometimes just at the thermostats. So be patient. That's something not many of us uh, men have. So, but you women probably do. So, and there are women service techs. We need more of them, I can tell you that. It's just saying start up, so yeah. 104, 103, it's counting down. Yeah, this is the first time ever working on this uh, particular brand here, so. So if you guys can see that, it's counting down, 96, 95. I'm gonna pause this until it's ready to come back on, and we'll see what happens. Okay, people, it was actually counting down. We are at, it's taken a while, but the draft motor just kicked on. I see there's a pressure switch. So draft motor kicks on, it's gonna make that pressure switch to make, let's turn a click. Ignite. Okay, good. That's good. That's a good sound, everybody. All right, now, let's step back here. Okay, at this time, what we know, the unit needed a good maintenance. We gotta clean the coil still. Blower motor just kicked on, I just heard. Yes, blower motor has kicked on, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna let this heat the space for right now. Meanwhile, I gotta go clean those other filters for that makeup air unit. So I just wanna give people heat down there. So, all right, I'm gonna put these panels uh, back on just 
There's nobody coming up here, but safety first. All right, let's go clean the filters. I don't know if you guys can see all the debris coming off this and I'm, I'm not even done yet. Um, I'm gonna have to grab a couple Snickers because I'm gonna be here for a while, okay? So, I know, I got a bunch of corny jokes. I hope you guys like them. There'll be many more. Guys, go. Bunch of debris. Debris, got a bunch of debris. Okay, I gotta keep cleaning. Okay guys, that's after cleaning one filter. Imagine the airflow increase just by that one filter, okay? I'm only holding this up to the sun so you guys can really see the difference, okay? So it'll push the air to where it wants to, okay? Satisfying thermostats, unlike this. This will cause it to overheat, okay? So there you go. Okay, everyone. I got done cleaning those filters. This unit was running in the meantime. The temperature went from 58 degrees Fahrenheit to 64. I shut it off to allow me to come over, clean off these coils, okay? Clean these coils off, give them a good fresh base to get you know started. So I'm just using a little bit of EVAP coil cleaner, just a little bit, and I'm gonna rinse it off. I don't like to leave it on there, especially when we're winter time. There's less humidity in the, well, little to no humidity in the winter time and uh, it, your AC is not pulling any moisture out, so it's not self-rinsing anymore. It's just gonna dry on there. Some people actually have told me that they have been offended by the smell of coil cleaner. Whatever, Every, everybody's preference is different. So, all right, be careful of economizer controls and do not spray down the ductwork. Customers don't like that. Okay, explain this to me. Why do they pipe a drain to a drain on a roof in Pittsburgh? I don't know if they know this, but it rains a lot here in Pittsburgh. You don't need to run it all the way over there, but this isn't a flat roof, by the way. This is a pitched roof. So just, just saying, just pointing that out, just kind of obvious. Okay guys, so I like to rinse this stuff off. Give it a little rinse, let it go down the drain, let it clean off that coil a little bit. Make sure you flush down the other drain as well, which I did, a lot of crud come out of this. So, but that's good, takes away odors, mold, spores, um, dust, dander, whatever. Helps out with people's breathing. Helps out suction pressure. Try not to overflow that drain pan. Customers don't like that. I'm back. We're still heating, by the way. We're still heating. That's a good thing. I know the unit's still running, but I do not want to shut them down at this point.
Nice. That's what we want. Okay, guys, um, contemplating what I'm going to do here. I'm going to mention something to the property owner and the manager. Uh, I think their curb adapter and duct connection is messed up inside of here. Uh, let me show you what I mean. When I was just changing these filters, I had to pull the door off. While we, I did it while it was running because everything's pretty much wrapped up. Well that door was real tight it's a negative pressure from the blower motor yes it's supposed to have a little give to it but it was really tight and slamming on there almost like there's a damper shut i was sticking my hand down in the return and it was warm air actually hot air i did not put a thermometer down there but i want to say it was well over 90 100 degrees okay it shouldn't be that because downstairs it's 72 degrees ish right now um, let me show you what I've coming across here just hear me out just hear me out uh, now technicians we do snoop around okay we do this first time here okay so I, I'm like let me take a look at the heat exchanger okay newer unit now you got your your curb okay that this sits up on and everything you got your heat exchanger and blower motor comes through that hole up there well at your roof. That's the uh, main structure of the place, and you got your ductwork. So airflow is blowing down through here. Some's going down underneath. Who knows where it's coming around, going down, and I think it's coming up through the return. That's what I'm thinking is going on. I don't like this one bit. Okay. All right. Now let's go down in the return. Okay, you got your air filters. You got your return. Let's dip down in here. If I can. Uh, let me try this. Bear with me. That's it. I mean, why is that gap there from the curb? And you can see way over, way over there. Like this is, this should be over more and sealed off. And then you got your return down in here. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta snoop around a little bit, people. I'm going to uh, write it up where I can come back on a in a day or so. See if I can come back uh, early morning before they open up and look above the ceiling because I want to follow this up because I don't like that. Uh, we're it's losing its effect, its efficiency, it's it's wasting money. So. Um, this uh, captive air makeup air unit here. All right, all right. So those filters are all all new. Uh, it's it's not belt driven. Um, I should have checked before. I don't I don't know why I only do like one take with these videos. Anyways, um, I should have seen if there was an airflow alarm. Um, the reset. It's not tripped or anything. But they are set for 55 degree discharge air and 50. Uh, so it's this has no cooling involved. No cooling whatsoever. So, basically, if it's 90 degrees out, you're getting 90 degree air going into your space, okay? If it's zero degree out, we're set at 55, it's gonna shoot at once 55 degree air into the space, okay? Um, but I'm gonna crank these up. I do wanna test this out, but um, I'm gonna put those panels back on that packaged unit. I'm not liking that, so tell me what you guys think. Okay, uh, I'm gonna wrap her up. All right, so this is the makeup air unit from Captive Air. You got your fresh air intake going this side. Okay, it's gonna go through. There's gonna be a set of dampers that's inside there controlled by an actuator. Let me actually go to the other side here. There we go. There's our actuator that's gonna open that up. And then once that opens it up, it's gonna say, all right, let fan, let's kick on. Let me jump up over here. And we have our fan, okay? Our fan that's gonna supply the air, shoot straight down in. Now, this is a natural gas fired, okay? Got the Maxitrol set up, okay? So it ramps up and down your flame. Instead of, instead of like a typical gas furnace at somebody's house where it's either on or off, 
this one will modulate, which is real nice. It's, basically, it, it allows it to run all the time and just, it, it's like the throttle in your car. Your vehicle will just say, puts out 200 horsepower. You don't need 200 horsepower to drive across the parking lot, okay? That's where your throttle comes in. Well, this doesn't need 100% of its heat capacity when it's 50 degrees out, okay? It's heating it up five, five degrees or whatever you have that set at, so it's gonna ramp it up, okay? That's all, it just modulates. So, just trying to give a little example. I'm not gonna stick my hands in the fan, but there is no belt driven. Now, this is called a direct fire. Okay, direct fire. What do I mean by that? Well, that gas is gonna be supplied through the gas line coming through up into this channel. Okay, then down in there, you'll see right in the crevice, right in the center there, all these little ports. Okay, natural gas gonna come through, it's gonna ignite, and there's a flame sensor. I'm gonna clean that sensor while I'm here. Um, and literally, you're gonna have raw flame coming out here. Okay, raw flame and it's sending all that heat straight downstairs. Now you would think carbon monoxide. Well, you're getting so much outdoor air and it's combusting and it, how it's set up, you're fine, okay? Um, you, you'll be fine, but that's how it's made to run, okay? Sometimes you'll get indirect fired, but this one's direct fired. I have these on uh, quite a few um, makeup air units for buildings, so. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean this thing because I gotta wrap it up, guys. So just trying to give a little uh, heads up but I wanna make sure this runs so maybe I can catch the op operation for you guys just to show you the flames coming out because it's pretty cool how it works. So bear with me. Okay guys, well, got dark out. Um, I ran into a little bit of a, of a hiccup here. All right, because this is not my account, I don't know all the little quirks. Every business, every job site you go to, there's always a little catch. Okay, the makeup air unit behind me. I shut it down, check over wiring, clean flame sensors, there's no belts on it, the filters are clean, we're good. All right, I wanna fire it up. I turn the power back on, nothing, dead, nothing. No power going anywhere. So that tells me something had it locked out. Typically they're set up on an interlock system where when the makeup air's off, the exhaust fans are off. Well, the exhaust fans were still on, but the makeup air wouldn't come back on. It's almost like the disconnect was bad, but it wasn't. I've had disconnects go bad, by the way. Um, so I went downstairs trying to figure out where do we reset? How do we reset? Well, we were able to get a hold of the original um, uh, person in charge, uh, the uh, foreman um, who actually set this up. And he instructed me what to do. So, and I told him, I said, I am writing it down inside the unit. So I had to go shut off breaker number 12 and the Ansel system. That shut it down, shut everything down, reset, and it reset everything. So, and we are currently heating at this time. Let me open up this door gently so you guys can get a little view of the flames inside of here. You gotta be careful. Now, this is makeup air. Um, there you go. Okay. I don't want to whip this door wide open. They give a little, uh, a little view thing here, but. Anyways, it's up and running. Our filters are good. It's 72 degrees down in our space. The customer's happy. That's all that counts. So that's what we're here for. Get them up and running, keep the customer happy. So thank you very much for watching HVAC Explained. Um, if you like what you see, please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day, stay safe.